DustNet Core is built for extensibility, providing many extension points including logging extensions. In this video, we'll see how to use DustNet Core's logging extensions in ASP.NET Core and then a console app. If you are new and want to find your way back, please subscribe to the channel and enable the notification bell. So without further ado, let's dig in. Let's start with creating a new project. Search for ASP.NET Core and you will see many templates here. It doesn't matter which one you choose, everything is going to be the same. I'll choose ASP.NET Core Web API because it's the simplest one. Name your project whatever you want. For example, Web Logging. And hit Next. Let's stick to the defaults and create. Now let's open the project to see what's going on inside. Right click on your project, click Manage Nugget Packages, and install NLog. You also need to install this one, nlog.web.asp.net core. If you remember from the previous video, we need a config file. We are using asp.net core, so let's open up the first link. Now scroll down and copy this XML. Get back to Visual Studio and create a new file here. Add new item asp.net core data and xml file name it nlog.config paste that xml here right click on the file click properties and in the copy to output directory click copy always we talked about these configurations in the previous video, but this one is new. This way we can add assemblies that contain custom layout renderer. So if you write your own custom layout renderers, you should specify the assembly here. There are a few targets defined here and a few rules here. So if you scroll a little bit here, you see new layout renderers added here. ASP.NET request URL, ASP.NET MVC action, call site, ASP.NET request posted body and etc. There are many other layout renderers so let's check them out. So if you click all targets layouts and layout renderers you will see a list of all of them. So we have talked about these targets file and console but there are also mail, colored console, MongoDB database and many others as you can see there are a lot of them here. There are also layouts and layout renderers here. We'll talk about layouts in another video. In layout renderers, you'll see a lot of layout renderers that we haven't talked about. We talked about level, message, exception, and many others. But there are a lot of others that you can play with. Now let's just talk about the ASP.NET ones. If you scroll down here, you will see many ASP.NET Core layout renderers. So you can get the cookies, you can get the form, headers, host, IP, and anything that you want from these. If you have watched the first video about logging best practices, the most important one is this one, ASP.NET Trace Identifier. So let's copy this one and let's paste it somewhere here, for example, after the level and let's copy this to other one here so trace identifier is just an id for each request so if multiple users are using your website using this trace identifier you can distinguish between the logs of those users but if you don't have this on your logs you will be lost inside your logs now it's time for the final touch. Let's get back to this readme file and let's open up again this one and scroll down here. Let's copy all of this, get back to Visual Studio and let's go to program.cs and paste it here. Now add the namespace using nlog.web and everything works. So let's talk about these. Now in the main method we had just this line. But let's talk about all the other lines. 
Here we are configuring nlog to use our config file. Then we get the current class logger and this will return a logger that we can use to log. First, we say that the application is started. You may also want to add the application version here to know which logs belong to which version of your application. Then we start the host, but inside the try catch block to catch any exception that terminates our application. This is usually a database errors or any configuration errors in startup.cs. Before the application stops, we want to flush any logs inside our application. So we use nlog.logmanager.shutdown. We have also changed create host builder. Inside this one, we have added use nlog method. This will add nlog for dependency injection. There are many logging providers added by default in ASP.NET Core. So ASP.NET Core will log to console, debug, event viewer, trace viewer, and many other places. To avoid that, we clear providers. We need to also set the minimum level of the log to trace. This way, ASP.NET Core will not filter the logs before they reach to the end log. We have to also do this in app settings files. So let's remove these ones and set this to trace. And let's also do this to this one and remove the other ones because these files will override the default levels. Now let's see how to log. Close all of these and open a controller. As you can see, a logger is added by default. Whenever you need a logger, you should get it from dependency injection. So you specify the logger in your constructor. We use iLogger from Microsoft.extensions.logging and we specify the type of the class that needs the logger. So here it's the controller and this type will be used to generate the name of the logger. Now that we have the logger, we can log whatever we want to do. So let's use it to log, for example, a log information. And here we say get weather forecast was called. That's it. Now, what about exceptions? Whatever you do, do not try to do this. Do not wrap your actions inside try catch blocks and log your exceptions here inside the catch blocks. If you do this, you are repeating yourself inside every action that you have. And there is a programming principle called dry. Don't repeat yourself. So you don't want to add all of these inside all of your actions. So let's remove this and let's go to the startup.cs. Now let's go down here to the configure method, remove use developer exception page and at the first line add this code app.use exception handler. Here we get app builder and inside of this we use app builder.run to add a delegate to the middleverse. So here we get context. Let's just make it async because we are doing some async operation here. And let's put semicolons here. So this will get called whenever an exception is thrown by other middleverse. So we don't have to add all that try catch blocks inside all of our actions. Now here, first we want to get a logger. So let's use app builder dot application services dot get required service and we want a logger of type startup and let's store it in a variable. Now we have the logger. How do we get the exception? So we use context dot features dot get and we want i exception handler feature now we have the feature which provides the exception now we check if feature dot error is not null we log the error 
use logger.log error we pass the exception and we say any message that we want and finally we can write the response context dot response dot status code equals HTTP status code let's add the namespace and let's choose internal server error let's cast this to integer then let's say what is the response first let's just write the content type application slash json then here we use context dot response dot write async let's add their namespace let's use system dot text dot json dot json serializer and serialize this we add an anonymous type we say error something went wrong you can add the detail here if you want to for example uh, feature that error dot message and use await here This is a general one. You can also check for the type of the exception and do whatever you want here. For example, if you want to specify a not found error, you can check for the exception and if it's, for example, something missing from the database, you can specify a not found error here. Whatever you want to do. Now let's save this and run the application. Let's use this instead of IIS. Now let's call our first action here. And now let's check our log file. Now these are our log files. Let's open this one. And as you can see, we have our logs here. For example, this one, get weather forecast was called, is what we added inside our action. Okay, that's enough for this video. In the upcoming video, I'll show you how to read your log files. If you learned anything from this video, please drop a like. And if you don't want to miss the upcoming videos, subscribe to the channel and enable the notification bell. Until next time, enjoy liking.